Hi everyone, hope uh, everyone is doing well. Welcome to one more video series of uh, My Crypto Pal. Uh, this is the formal video series that we are going to start. And uh, what better than uh, starting with pure basics. So today's video's topic, as you can see, we are here to give you some knowledge and understanding about uh, fiat currency because everyone talks about uh, fiat currency, but uh, uh, somewhere in their mind, they're not quite clear. So I thought, uh, let's start with the basics because if you are going to start your financial journey, then uh, understanding what is the meaning, what is the real meaning of fiat currency is uh, very important. Now we'll cover some very important topics in this uh, video. Like you can see below, I have uh, described the topics uh, for today that we'll cover. So the first one is understanding the evolution of currency, how currency evolved. And I'm sure everyone knows the meaning of all this, but uh, just a gist of uh, everything uh, so that uh, people who don't know can benefit out of it. After that, we'll understand how US dollar became the national reserve currency and uh, how is it so dominating uh, on the stock markets because that is very important to understand yeah uh, after this we'll talk a little bit about uh, inflation because uh, it's very important to understand the meaning of inflation and why you should really uh, choose investing over holding your money in the banks i'll try my best to prove that to you that why at least uh, gaining some financial knowledge is important for everyone uh, you don't need to be master in this field but uh, at least the basics knowledge you should have so that uh, uh, you can make generational wealth by investing or at least you can beat the inflation uh, uh, you know as it becomes more and more worse so having said that let's uh, start with the video uh, okay talking about the evolution of money so what i'll do is i'll show you some pictures and i'll try try my best to explain them to you yeah okay so this is the evolution of money as you can see everyone is aware we started with the barter system barter system meaning exchange of material or commodities yes so if you want milk you can you know give a egg and borrow milk from someone then we evolved to gold standard but of course it was difficult to maintain because of the quantity issues because when you do a small trade meaning uh, buying and selling is a trade yeah when you buy and you sell you're basically trading uh, doesn't uh, not the logical meaning of it but buy and sell means trading so when you buy a small amount uh, fractionalizing the gold was very difficult yeah so that is why we moved on to metal coins then came paper money yeah plastic cards electronic money and then finally we are in cryptocurrency yeah? so this is how you see the money is evolving over time and uh, it is very important to understand that why we have evolved from here to here yes meaning the system must have failed somewhere yes leading to the invention or the use of new type of money yes if the system would be perfect and uh, it would work perfect for everyone we wouldn't need a new uh, system or a new paradigm shift altogether to you know use something which will give more benefit to people yes so for understanding money you need to understand there are basically two types of money okay one is reserve currency and the other one is fiat currency if you have um, marked a lot of people using fiat currency and some people are using reserve currency okay now you need to understand the meaning of both of them yes let's come to reserve currency now reserve currency means that any central bank meaning if it is india then the rbi is the central bank okay the rbi has to peg the currency against the dollar okay think of keep it very basic don't get into the intricacies of it because you will not understand everything in one go so it is like taking a loan from the bank yeah when you take loan from bank you deposit some collateral in the bank right like if you take a home loan you have to deposit papers of the land or papers of the flat and on the basis of that they give you the loan amount or uh, whatever yeah so similar concept so if you want to print a currency and use it you have to peg it against the gold reserve of the country this is to avoid people from printing innumerable innumerable amount of money uh, you know uh, compared to the gold reserve they have and then once it is pegged against the gold they can release it for international trade now this is called as reserve currency 
Coming to fiat currency, fiat means that it is issued by the government, but it is not backed by any physical commodity such as gold. <clears throat> so there is no backing in fiat currency okay so us dollars euro and the pounds these are the examples of fiat money now they were not like this before but over a period of history they have evolved to become like this that is why we primarily call this three as fiat currency and others as a reserve currency okay now uh, coming to understanding why uh you need to understand the dominance of US dollars or how it became the national reserve currency or the reserve currency of the world is very important. Okay. So uh, to understand this, you have to visit history and lessons and you have to refer there are a lot of articles on internet, very good articles you can read and you will have a good understanding of this. But what I have done is I have summarized the whole concept and I have put it down in a word file, which I'll put in the description below. So people who have more knowledge of this can benefit out of this and read it and uh, understand. I'm, I'll definitely recommend everyone to go through the document once. It will line up perfectly how the evolution has happened and how US dollar has taken over the world. Okay. This is basically the Bretton Woods agreement. You must have heard this from lot of videos uh, people mentioning this yes but uh, basically summarizing the whole thing for you you can see i've highlighted a lot of things i have taken from internet and i've prepared a document for you okay so the first thing you need to understand is before everything started gold was the standard okay now uk was the leader meaning uk had the maximum reserve of gold that time yes that is why the most dominating currency that time was british pounds everybody had to peg their currency against the gold this was the only way to stabilize the currency okay so britain was the world's leading currency that time yeah so the pound was the most dominating i mean this is before the world war one yeah as the World War I started, you can see during the third year of the war, Britain needed funds to fund the war. Yes, because the war has to be funded. The soldiers have to be fed, uh, militaries, uh, equipments, everything. You need money for all this. Yes. So you see from the third year of the war, Britain required more money. Yes. So it started looking for countries who can lend it money. Yes. We give, give it money as a debt. Who became the biggest lender that time? United States. So what United States did was they started lending money that time by, by how, how, how to lend money? Buying US dollar dominated US bonds. Now don't get into US bonds. Just think that they gave dollar which was pegged against the gold reserve uh, of their own country. Okay. So the more debt you give, the more liable the country is to pay you back. Okay. Now a time will come when you cannot, when you cannot pay back the debt. Yes. It got worse because after that, World War II also started. So they required even more money, you know. US became the main ally. Ally meaning a country which is a supplier of weapon and other goods, you know, basically assisting, not fighting the war, but basically assisting the war. So US became the main allies. So the main supplier of weapons and other goods. Yes. So most country had to pay gold back to the US. Yes, this is the only way to repay the debt which they had got from US. So over a period of time, what happened is lot of gold came to America. Yes, because there was a lot of debt which was being repaid in the form of gold. So the gold reserve in America started increasing manifold. That is why a place called as Bretton Wood, which is in New Hampshire in 1944, a group of 44 allied countries met. Yes. And then there was a decision which was taken that day that US dollar yeah, will become the new gold. Okay, so instead of pegging their currency with gold, they will start pegging it with US dollar. So this is how US dollar became the national reserve currency or the uh, most used currency. Yes, because everyone have to has to have US dollars with them if they want to trade internationally in the market. So you can see the demand for treasuries and securities increased so much because there were a lot of wars followed by that, like the Vietnam War, the Great Society domestic programs, which was created by the United States. Yes. So they started printing US dollar and they started flooding the market. Yeah, a time came that there was so much debt requirement in the whole world that enough 
so much US dollar was printed that it was impossible to peg it against the gold. That is why you can see President Nixon, Richard Nixon, he was the man who forced, who was forced to intervene and dealing dollar from gold. Okay, which means that now dollar does not has to be pegged against gold. Okay, so you can close your eyes and print as much money as you want. That is what President Nixon did. Okay, because of that, look where we stand now. Dollar remains the world's reserve currency today. Central banks hold around 59% of their reserves in US dollar, according to the IMF. Many of the reserves are in cash or US bonds such as US treasuries. Yes, dollar do denominated debt outside the US continues to rise with levels reaching 13.4 trillion as of mid-22. So you can see America has found its way out by printing more and more and more and more money. Yes, this is the only way they have inflated their currency to reduce the value of their debt. That is why, you know, I've put a tagline over here. This is why there is unlimited demand for US debt because everyone wants dollar, dollar, because you cannot, cannot trade without the US dollar. That's why the Fed can print ad infinitum. Yes. So this is basically the gist of it. Now you need to understand that if you want to trade in the market, import, export, banks, whatever services, central banks over the whole around the world, they have to hold US dollars. Okay, this is where you find the US debt. Okay, so this is the US debt clock dot org. This is a live uh, website. If you go over here, you can see US national debt, <coughs> how much debt per citizen they have and debt per taxpayer. Yeah, this you can see the revenue over here and you can see the debt over here. There are a lot of in interesting terms over here. If you want, you can read through. I can explain this, but this will take a lot of time to explain each one. But the important thing is this one, US federal debt to GDP ratio. You can see it is 129.91%. Okay. We are definitely not going in the right direction. Yes. So you can see this much amount of debt per citizen has to be paid somehow. I don't think, believe that is ever going to happen, but, uh, this is a good uh, amount of information. You can go to this website and uh, see for yourself. Okay. Now, understanding how much have they printed over time? Okay. You can see over a three and a half month period. Yeah. This is during the coronavirus crisis. The Federal Reserve in America has printed a little over three trillion dollars in order to counter the economic impact of COVID-19. Unbelievable. Three trillion dollars. Yes. You see the Federal Reserve total asset was growing like this and boom, it went, it shot up during the coronavirus crisis. See, straight line up, 12 months of money printing right there for you. <laughs> that is how the money stock has gone up. Okay. Now, maybe you don't understand all this. What, what, what is the meaning of all this? How is it going to impact you? But because of this money printing, there was a, uh, you know, a very good up run or a bull run that we noticed in the stock market. This is called quantitative easing. Basically, that is why stock market was going up. Crypto market was going up. Housing market was going up. Everything was going up, up and up. More liquidity build up. Finally, we have ended up in a recession and uh, markets are going down because it was expected. <laughs> People kept on saying that we are going to have bull run till the next uh, for the next two years, but you can see the amount of money that had been printed, the amount of debt that had grown, it has to be tightened. So now we are in quantitative tightening. Yes, that time we were in quantitative easing. Okay. So this is the effect of US dollar printing by the United States of America. Okay. So this is how US, you can see, became the reserve currency of the world. Yeah. See the dominance of US dollar in green and look where British pounds is. British pounds sterling gray look at the gray dominance here and look at the green dominance here so this is how us has taken over market you can see india is nowhere here also okay so now let me explain you why understanding us dollar the role of us dollars in stock market is important is because you can see this is the putting the world's money into perspective okay 
the entire world's money is divided in only these assets okay these are the largest assets which hold the largest money the whole money in the world okay you can see us dollar is here 1.5 trillion dollars okay gold is here physical money stock market you see how big stock market is 66.8 trillion dollars unbelievable no now the person who is holding maximum position in the stock market becomes the world leader right i can see in 1899 mark this number 1899 don't get overwhelmed by the chart when you see i'll try to keep it simple so this is the relative sizes of world stock market okay 1899 is this pie chart and 2020 is this pie chart you can see the dominance of usa was here 15% in 1899 and in 2020 it is 54.5% so anything which is above 50% becomes dominant by default correct that is why everywhere you go you see wait till the us market open we will take a decision when the us market open don't do don't take any trades till the us market open these are the terms you keep hearing yeah people keep referring to wait for 27th of july what is going to happen on 27th of july federal reserve meeting is going to happen on 22nd or 27th of july nobody talks about rbi meetings nobody talks about inflation rate of india nobody talks about cpis of india no that's not important why because usa has the power to affect the stock market okay because it has the maximum dominance you can see india is nowhere over here not even in little bit i think the lowest one is australia which is 2.2% no worries we'll get there we have our own stock market so we don't need the national the world's stock market okay now <clears throat> I hope you have understood the importance of US in the whole stock market thing. Okay, now coming to the effects of money printing. One effect I un made you understood that quantitative easing, quantitative tightening. Quantitative easing means when people don't have money to spend. Okay, so what governments do is they release money in the market or they flood the money in market. How can you do that by reducing interest rate? Because if you lower the interest rate, people can take loan from you easily. Once you take the loan, you go and spend. Just basically increasing the spending ability of the citizen. Okay. that is the only way you can flood money in the market because we are the grassroots level consumers okay so they give us money now we go and spend and we flood money in the market quantitative tightening is the opposite of that you increase interest rate so people can't take loan anymore so the spending goes down the demand goes down production remaining same if the demand goes down prices of commodity started increasing and we go to inflation now there are two types of inflation we can get into details of it one is demand side inflation one is supply side inflation but that's a whole new topic to discuss all together let's just focus on simple things today i can give you all concepts in one video but you're not going to retain everything okay so let's just understand the basics of inflation now what has happened is because of so much of us dollar printing purchasing power has gone down now what do i mean by purchasing power purchasing power means if you would spend 1 dollar yesterday and the amount of items you could get is less today understand if you send spend the same amount of dollar today you will get less items this is called purchasing power so your salary is increasing over the years but the amount of money they are printing or the amount of inflation which is happening is not is more than your salary increase okay so that is why your purchasing power is going less less and less you can see your dad or your grandfather or his father they could buy more flats than you can afford today they could buy more land that you can buy today yes your father you must have heard your father saying that in 100 rupees i used to get this this and this <clears throat> but now you see in 100 rupees you cannot get anything this is inflation all you need to understand is this okay no need to complicate it with uh, by using fancy terms and all okay so this is the inflation chart as you can see in february 2019 the cpi consumer price index no need to remember all these fancy terms it is not going to help you which is that the cpi was 2.57 now it is 6.58 
that means you are paying more money than you used to pay before for the same quantity of goods if you still don't understand this you see as the years went on from 1940 to 2020 and 2014 more and more money got printed but your purchasing power has gone down yeah it's a negative curve you can see purchasing power of the consumer dollar that means more money came in the market but your ability to spend has gone down yeah so it is not going to help you if you type inflation rate of india in google it is only showing 6.7% this i have taken a screenshot today only 6.7% it is showing the actual inflation rate is lot different correct because you have to take average of all the commodities commodities and find an inflation rate right so <clears throat> these are the inflation rates of countries around the world look at russia's inflation rate 17.8% nigeria 16.8% where is india here 7.8% and then usa is here in 8.3% the money all the money that was printed was by usa all the development that happened happened in usa but which are the countries which are suffering russia nigeria poland brazil netherlands and now suddenly recession why recession happened because of russia ukraine war no it did not happen because of russia ukraine war inflation cannot happen in a span of 3 months or 6 months inflation was bound to happen because of the debt the amount of debt that was spreading in the market right you see the cup of coffee come to even more simpler example in 1970 one cup of coffee used to cost you 0.25 dollars the same cup of coffee today will cost you 1.85 dollars imagine you have to pay 1.85 dollars if you relate this to to the chai in india the chai used to cost probably 25 paisa you know i don't know when since i was born it was so cheap today it is 10 rupees and if you want to go for those fancy tandoori chai is and turkish uh, turkish style tea it is 25 to 30 rupees in a street in a local streets if you want to have if you want to have it in restaurants this is a different other story altogether this is the this is one very good example of um, grocery carts you can see in 1998 $20 could fetch you this much amount of grocery look how much you are getting in 2014 i have not even put 2020 because if i put 2020 there will be only one mentors in this grocery can yeah so it's just 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 to keep it simple so that anyone who sees the video understand all you need to understand is this is inflation okay no need to understand cpi federal reserve rate what is the repo rate of rbi ppi index you don't need to understand all this all you need to remember is whatever money i was spending yesterday if i spend it today i will get less amount of groceries for my family that's the basic okay let's make it even more simpler what are the two major things you are using every day in your life when you wake up one is egg and one is milk okay everyone barring the vegetarians they can use milk milk and egg this is a daily necessity in any household okay across the world not only in india across the world just look at egg this is the five year average of egg prices in mumbai okay price per 100 pieces i have only taken from january to december it was 384 rupees for 100 pieces in january and in december 420 rupees okay you can see wholesale prices of eggs price surge in november from 2 to 18 so that's 2nd november to 18th of november not even 20 days and the prices have risen from 450 to 600 rupees this is just one example yeah what happened what happens actually when price surges this is in delhi the blue one is delhi the red one is mumbai everything gets clear when you see it in a chart format be it a bar graph format be it a linear graph or a pie chart okay charts are excellent i love charts same thing is with milk you see the volume of milk production in india has gone up from 2007 to 2020 it has gone up you can see the bar graph is increasing yes now if the production is increasing keeping the demand same the prices should go down no but surprisingly you are paying 6 rupees every year more for the same packet of milk that you are buying and you don't need to be a genius 
for someone to tell you that it has gone up by more than 10% a year. Okay, you can see 24 rupees, 30 rupees in one year time. It has gone up by 6 rupees. You don't even know, need to calculate the actual percentage it has gone up by. Because all you need to calculate is, has it gone up more than 10%? Yes. 10% <coughs> would be 28 rupees. 26 rupees. Correct? So if it has gone up by 10% and you are keeping your money in the bank, now what are the banks offering you every year? You see, this is the interest rate. On a savings bank account, you would get from different banks in India. Okay? This is just uh, from Money Control. I have taken a screenshot. Not accurate, but the basic average is 4%. Sometimes it is even 3.25% if it's a new bank or a bad financial year for the bank. Okay? Now you are getting an interest rate of 4, 3 to 4% if you keep your money in the bank. That too is this uh, categorized as per the amount of money you deposit with them. Okay? And there are various other hidden charges to this. And the inflation rate is 10%. So this is basic mathematics. You don't need to be an Einstein to figure this out. The inflation rate is 10%. So your money is dropping by 10% every year and bank is paying you 3%. So 7% still you are losing. <laughs> now if you don't keep it in the saving bank account and deposit in a fixed, fixed deposit, little bit better, no? 5.7%, 6.5%, 4.4%, 5.6%. Average FD rates, which has also gone down over years. Printing has gone up, but FD rates is going down. Irony of the world. So now, instead of losing 7%, if you keep it in FD, you will end up losing 5% on an average per year. Okay, But if you go and take a loan from the bank, yeah, be it home loan, be it land loan, be it car loan, be it bike loan, do you see anything less than 10%? Home loan was also 10, more than 10% few years back. Okay. Now, because of quantitative easing, it is hovering somewhere between 7 to 9%. It is also going to increase after few years when tightening finishes. You see, everything is above 10%. Everything. So, banks are anyway beating inflation. Yeah. Because these are the products they are selling you. That is why you see LIC agents in your house every day sipping tea with your dad. And telling him to make new Jeevan, Jeevan Bima policy for your daughter or for your newborn son. Okay. You see your friends who are working in banks, keep, they keep on calling you to take car loan, to take bike loan. No, he doesn't want to help you. He just wants to sell his product to you. Because Indian parents, they don't understand anything. All they know is we have an LIC agent who is looking after us selling by selling us crap loan and uh, schemes over a period of 25 30 years so you also fall into that same trap okay there is nothing wrong in taking a loan okay but take loan which is supposed to make your life easier not your life miserable look at this interest free emi do you know what this means interest free emi is the highest interest you have to pay 24% okay these are the EMIs which you are paying on Amazon <clears throat> or e-commerce websites when you are buying products on a basis of EMI because when you sell it as a monthly EMI, an iPhone which was costing 1,30,000 now only cost 5 to 6 grand, 5 to 6,000 a month for a person whose salary is 40,000 rupees, now he can afford iPhone. But actually you are falling in a trap, my friend, because if you are spending more than you are earning, it is, is never going to end up good, okay? You will never be able to make generational wealth for your family and some at some point down the line, you are going to stop your spending. That is 100%. It can be 5 years, it can be 10 years. You will come in trouble if you don't stop right away, okay? Credit card. Loan against credit card is the second 21% after EMI. Okay, that is why you see cred coming up with so much of ads. Yeah, credit card is the best business around there because of this interest rate in manufacturing industries. The rate of return for your investment is around 13% if it's a very good manufacturing industries. But in credit card, it is 21%. Why you need to work so much? 
that is why you see e-commerce is booming in india see digitalization is booming in india yeah that's why you see everyone understands this be it a bank be it a big manufacturing industry everyone they understand the importance of investing and they understand the importance of generating more than 10 percent every month now coming back to what kind of investments you can do yeah now see there are a lot of types of investments which are available for you to do in india yeah? stocks bonds convertibility ventures mutual funds exchange traded funds options annuities commodities retirement plans cryptocurrencies precious metals so many things yes so many amount of products available for you to invest but if you do not understand what is the meaning of a public provident fund what is the meaning of an exchange traded fund what is the meaning of national pension scheme and how you can benefit from it okay how what is the meaning of fixed deposit what is the meaning of bonds if you don't understand this how will you invest are you going to go on youtube see some random youtuber pitching you that okay go and buy this much and put this 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 mutual fund put your money in sovereign gold bond here and there no or are you going to download zerodha or money control or upstocks or grow i don't know thousands of apps have come remember guys you are paying money for convenience okay so because of convenience they are showing you which mutual funds to invest in yes so the top mutual funds which come in zerodha or in money control or in icici prudential don't you think that um, they have done something to get there on the first page yeah be it promotion be it marketing be it whatever you are smart enough to understand that okay so instead of doing all that why don't you gain some knowledge of the financial tool you want to invest in and do it yourself do you know what is the difference between a regular mutual fund and a direct mutual fund has anyone told you where and how you can go and buy sgbs has anyone told you what is a kishan vikas patra do you know there are five six schemes of post office which will give you much better return than fixed deposits yeah do you know what is invoice discounting do you know what is small case investing there are so many n number of things that i cannot even explain you in one video yeah so many tools to just go and invest you won't believe that buying and selling domains domains you mean this www. blah blah.com people are buying that domain and selling it later that can also be traded okay people are making money today out of nowhere just by sitting at home basic knowledge is important guys yes no I, i mean this is a very simple logic yes somebody taught you how to ride a cycle be it your father be it anyone who did it yes so in the same but once you know how to ride a cycle you never forget it correct in the same way once you learn financial investing you will never forget it correct and it is not difficult believe me it is the same way like riding a cycle slowly but steadily and consistently if you do it over a period if you are 23 now or 25 or below 30 now all you need to do is give one year of your life okay to understand financial education there is so much knowledge available across internet it will be very very easy for you okay just come and visit us one hour every day you can subscribe learn and earn with us okay come and see our video get financial education from us and i promise you in one month six months to one year time you will have all knowledge about financial investing not just crypto market crypto is the domain i like to invest and trade on that is why mostly i'll speak about cryptocurrency but my major goal is to cover the entire financial education because in schools or in colleges nowhere they are giving you financial education none of you know that is why lic agents are so rampant in our lives okay because no one has that education no one can counter them uncle says do an lic i go and do an lic uncle says go and buy that plot a airport is going to come in front of that you will double your money in 2 years and then that airport never comes for 30 years uncle is away uncle said i don't know i told you i thought it will come okay so internet you have the power today guys when we were growing up we did not have the power of internet 
you can just sit at home and type anything you want to learn and it will just come flash in front of you all you need to do is one hour every day okay you see these are the top rated websites in the world google facebook <clears throat> youtube wikipedia yeah by looking at all this you see so many of websites people must be learning lot of things but when you start searching the most searched key phrases or categories you get this in internet you see porn porn translate maps free porn sex iphone 6 mail click info calculator and if you go by category adult content celebrities shopping lottery music yeah astrology communication social media and financial is somewhere in the bottom yeah it's good that people are getting little bit of aware nowadays that they can make money from financial market but sadly the so much misconception is being shown by ads and the trading campaigns that are being run around that people are getting trapped and they're losing all their hard earned money trading is gambling also so they're getting addicted to it and if today if they lose 100 rupees tomorrow they are trying with 100 again why don't you sit and learn something for one year become good at it and it's it's your hard earned money you are investing don't just throw it away okay value money okay use the internet for good things like staying in touch with friends and families you see filling up spare time takes about 36.4% of the whole reason for using social media okay 36.4% in this spare time instead of watching reels of some random girls dancing on some number some guys uh, mimicking you know uh, an audio clip or watching a, a reel on youtube or shorts on youtube instead of doing that why don't you just one hour every day after you finish your work after you have your dinner before you sleep watch one hour every day or in the morning when you get up after you finish your month daily routine one hour every day before shower read something i'm not saying it has to be particularly this but come just watch our video that we post slowly slowly we'll break down the content in such a way that you don't need to go anywhere else all information in one place every day okay one hour one hour of your life you have to give and i can guarantee you in one year you will reach financial freedom for you yourself and your family okay because if you don't understand this you can never secure your child's future if you don't understand this you can never secure your own retirement yeah you will end up working 9 to 5 your whole life and you will end up buying a product which is not within your salary range on the basis of emi and credit cards okay i think this is enough guys hope you to cover something from the video hope i could motivate you enough to get on this journey with us okay and uh, thank you for watching guys and if you like the video don't forget to like share and subscribe okay and uh, uh, please uh, come and visit us every day and uh, let's uh, get on this journey together